Lesson 10.5 today. Today we're going to be talking about other angle relationships in circles. And there's only three theorems in this lesson, so I'm going to do the first video of just the theorems themselves. And then in the second video, we'll do a bunch of examples of them maybe about, well, definitely one for each, and then maybe a couple of them kind of backwards so you can kind of see how you might use some algebra. All right, here we go. Theorem 10.11. Now, some of you the other day had asked me, could you... Could you maybe like write those theorems out? And then others are like, no, that would take too long. So keep in mind that the theorems are in your book. If I change the theorem, I will let you know. All right, I'll shorten it up a little bit sometimes or whatever. And I'm going to do that for theorem 10.12 and 10.13, just so you know. So here we go, theorem 10.11. It says if a tangent, okay, this is a tangent. This point B is the point of tangency. If a tangent and a chord, okay, intersect at a point on a circle. Then the measure of each angle, there's two different angles here, the measure of each angle is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. All right, this is not a difficult theorem to understand or even to prove. What do we know about these two angles? Way back in the beginning of the year. I told you there's this one postulate that we gotta know, we're gonna use it all year long and we're still using it as we're in chapter uh, a tent now. So. What do you know about these two angles? Hopefully you're thinking, oh yeah, linear pair postulates. All right, so we know that these two angles together add to equal 180. Okay, well what about the circle itself? Let me zoom out a little bit so we can get this whole picture in all at the same time and I'm still figuring out this camera. All right, so um, what do we know about our two arcs we have here? We have a minor arc and we have a major arc and together they add to equal 360 degrees. So the angles add to equal 180 the arcs add to equal 360, 180 is half of 360. Each angle, therefore, is half of its arc. So let's talk about how that works. So angle CBD, that's this one right here, okay, equals, and I'm going to put measure, the measure of the angle, equals one half of the measure of arc BD. Okay, this angle, and we don't stop at the circle, there we go, all the way out to the line itself, to the tangent line, is half of its intercepted arc. If I extended this cord out so that it would become more like a ray, this arc is inside of this angle. That's what an intercepted arc is. We had talked about that back in lesson five, intercepted arc. Okay, so the concept is really the same idea as an inscribed angle. Remember an inscribed angle we talked about um, Another lesson, let me draw you a picture of that real quick, if you forgot what we we're talking about. Okay, an inscribed angle, an angle that looked something like this. Okay, and we said that this angle here was half of this arc here. Okay, now this is not an inscribed angle because this ray is not inside the circle. Okay, but it has the same exact idea. Angle is half the arc, angle is half of the arc on the other side of this. Okay, we have a larger angle, okay? Let me backtrack real quick. Remember, this angle has to be less than 180 as a minor arc, so this arc has to be less than 180 as a minor arc. So if we cut that in half, we're gonna get an answer that's less than 90, so this is an acute angle. Over here, it looks like we have more, have more of an obtuse angle, that makes sense. So the measure of that angle is also half of its arc. And this arc is more than 180, but less than 360. So if we cut that in half, we get something that's more than 90, but less than 180, an obtuse angle. So this is all making sense. So the measure of angle ABD, that's this one over here, I'll put two marks on it to show that it's different, okay, equals one half times the measure. Now how do we name a major arc? We use three letters, remember that? So the measure of arc BED, all right? That's theorem 10.11, very, very, very simple theorem, okay? Theorem 10.12, this one. I'm gonna read it out of the book. It looks like this picture right here. Okay, we got chords intersecting at a point other than the center point. Remember this random dot is not gonna be a random dot, it's always a center point. And I've got this down here just so we can name this major arc if necessary. So that's where there's a dot down there, all right? Okay, theorem 10.12, if two chords intersect inside a circle, no. Two chords don't have to intersect, all right? Um, so that's why they say if this happens. But if two chords intersect inside a circle, then the measure of each angle, 
Well, how many angles do we have? We actually have four different angles here, but we know that these two angles have to be equal to each other by vertical angle theorem, which tells me this can't just equal that, and this can't just equal that, because these two arcs are obviously different. So if the angle equaled the arc, and then this angle equaled this arc, these angles would be different. And they can't be different because they're vertical angles. That worked back here when we were at the central angle. Okay? So go back to the theorem. If two chords intersect inside a circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. All right. A lot of words there. Let's think about what it says. What it's telling me is that this angle right here, okay, so angle RQS, the measure of angle RQS equals one half, I'm going to write it as a fraction with a two in the denominator, half of the sum, sum means that I add. Well, what does it say to add? It says half the sum of the measures of the arcs. Okay, so we got a couple arcs that we're going to put here and here intercepted by this angle. Okay, so as we move out with our rays, we intercept arc RS. And by its vertical angle. Well, this is the vertical angle, and that arc goes with that one, so PT. There we go, that's our formula. Okay, so if we have an angle inside a circle, right, but it's not at the center point, it's not on the circle, then we can't just say it's half of the arc. It's half of these two arcs. It's their average. That's what it means when we add two things and divide by two. Now we can do the same thing for this angle up here, or this angle down here. It doesn't matter which one. They're the same. They're vertical angles. So I'm just going to do this one up here. Okay, and it's different than this one. Now remember, those are linear pairs. They're 180. Okay, all right. So how do we find the measure of angle PQR? Measure of angle QPR, or PQR, sorry, is one half, so I'm gonna put that over two again, the measure of the sum, okay, I gotta add, of its arc, well, which arc goes with this angle? We run out here and we hit that arc, arc PR, and its vertical angle's arc. Well, when we go to the vertical angle, that's this really big arc, and that's more than a semicircle. I know it's more than a semicircle because if I drew the diameter from S over through the center point, I would end up here. So that's farther around. So that's more than 180. Okay? So I gotta use three letters. So T U S. Arc T U S. And you know what? Technically, I should probably have some M's in here, in here, in here, in here, because you can't just add arcs, you add their measures. So let me fix that real fast. The measure of all these arcs. And that's it. So if the angle is inside, but not at the central angle, then you average two arcs. Which two? Its arc, so kind of this way, and then just go straight across backwards. Okay, for this angle, we go this way and this way. Okay, that's theorem 10.12. And finally, theorem 10.13. Now, theorem 10.13 actually has three pictures. One, two, and Three. I don't have any ang uh, letters on here because I'm going to keep it very, very, very simple. And I'll show you how it works. It works the exact same way for all three of them. Okay. Theorem 10.13. Once again, this theorem is in your book. Okay. I'm going to read it to you and then I'll explain how it works. Okay. And I'll kind of explain as we go. It says if a tangent and a secant. Okay. That's actually my second picture here. This is a tangent. It's really a tangent ray, but it's tangent and a secant. Okay. So if a tangent and a secant or two secants, that's this one, secant and a secant, or two tangents, tangent and a tangent. Now, think back to lesson, I think it was one or two. We, we learned that if I stop right here at the point of tangency and right here at the point of tangent, these segments are congruent. Okay, we discussed that in a previous lesson, okay? And we're going to talk about the lengths of these things in lesson six, the lengths of these in lesson six, all right? Um, but anyways, if we've got any of these options, tangent and secant, secant and secant, or my paper flies away from me, tangent and tangent, okay, then this theorem is going to apply to find this angle. And they have to, what we're talking about is as they come out here and they intersect, what point they intersect at forms an angle. Now, it is possible for two tangents 
if they're exactly opposite on the circle to run parallel. In that case, they'd never intersect, so we wouldn't be able to do this. All right, but that's about the only time we can't do it. All right, so what we're talking about is this angle right here, and here, and then down in this last picture, we're talking about this angle right here. All right, what does the theorem say? It says if any of these things happen, then the measure of this angle formed is one half. Okay, this kind of sounds like theorem 10.12, so we're gonna have that fraction again. One half the difference. Ah, that, that's what makes this difference than theorem 10.12. We're talking about a difference rather than a sum. One half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. Okay, so remember intercepted arcs are inside, so we're talking this arc, and this one. Okay, the top arc and the bottom arc, they don't really matter in our formula. Now, they might matter in the problem, but they don't matter in the formula. What in the world do you mean by that, Mr. Oates? Watch the second video, look at the examples, you'll find out what I mean. Okay, here, this arc and this arc matter in the formula. This one doesn't matter in the formula, but it might matter in the problem. Here we have this one and this one. They're the only two arcs, they both matter. Okay, now how do you know which one to subtract? Well, if you do this one minus that one, that's smaller minus bigger. Smaller minus bigger gives me a negative number, and I divide a negative number by two, I get a negative answer, and that doesn't make any sense for an angle. Okay, well, what about this one? That's smaller, that's bigger. If I do smaller minus bigger, I get a negative number, negative number divided by two, negative answer doesn't make sense for an angle. So it's always big arc minus little arc, and that's all you need to write down for this one. The measure of the angle equals big arc minus little arc over two. That is the extremely shortened version of theorem 10.13. Measure of the angle equals the big arc minus the little arc over two. Now, let's look at each of these pictures real quick so you understand. This is the big arc. This is the little arc. This arc and this arc don't matter in my formula. They might matter in the problem. But they don't matter in the formula. Okay, what are we looking at this one? Big arc, little arc. Extra arc doesn't matter in the formula, it might matter in the problem. This one, this one's not tough. Big arc, little arc. They both matter in the formula. They are the only two arcs, obviously they both matter in the problem. That's it, it's less than five. Just gotta know those formulas. Okay, so quick review. Tangent and a chord, point of tangency, two angles formed, two arcs formed, each angle is half of the arc. Two chords not at the center point intersecting form four angles, but the angles are the same by vertical angles. So this angle, that arc plus that arc divided by two. This angle, that arc plus that arc divided by two. Angle is now outside rather than inside. That's the difference between theorem 10.12 and 10.13. Angle's outside, back on 10.12 it was inside. When it's outside, we change that to subtraction instead of addition. All right, big minus little over two. Big minus little, over two. Big minus little, over two. That's it. That's lesson five. We'll do some examples in the second video.